I get this question asked all the time, where do you get your O-rings from? And in today's episode, I'm gonna share with you guys how to measure O-rings and where you can find them online. First of all, I'm gonna share with you guys how to measure an O-ring and to do that, you're gonna need a vernier caliper. This one happens to be digital and the nice feature about this digital caliper is I can switch it from metric to imperial. This will come in handy for the variations of our O-rings. Before I go ahead and measure the O-rings with the digital caliper, I wanna make sure you guys at home understand what we have to measure. The three main measurements on the O-ring consists of the ID, which is the inside diameter of the O-ring, the OD, which is the outside perimeter of this O-ring, and the cross section. The cross section is basically the width of the O-ring itself. I'm going to grab this little O-ring and the digital caliper, and I'm going to measure the inside diameter first. You want to make sure when you measure the inside diameter that you do not stretch the O-ring and that you can still rotate the O-ring around both surfaces of the vernier. Now, when I measure this right here, you will notice it comes to 14.45. That is very close to 14 and a half millimeter. So I will share with you guys the chart later on, but now we'll measure the cross section as well. Now to measure the cross section, we can measure it like this up front on the tip that comes to 2.38. There is always a slight variation on the O-rings as they are not always perfect. They do have a tolerance as well but you can also measure it from this side as well. And we measure 2.35. So we had 2.38 this way and 2.35, and it seems very close to 2.4. The link to this website will be down in the description. And when we look at it, we have a cross section between two and 2.6 millimeter. We had around 2.38 or 2.4 millimeter. And on the top, we will see our cross section over here, 2.0, and it turns into 2.4. So we'll go down a little bit and our ID or inside diameter is on this line. So if we go 2.4 and an ID of around 14 and a half, we will check which O-ring that is. And it seems to be this O-ring right here, 2.4 millimeter by 14.5 millimeter. And that right there is the part number. What I just shared with you guys was the easiest way to measure the inside diameter and the cross section of an O-ring. Hopefully you guys can determine your O-ring size at home and with the charts down in the description, I hope you can find the suitable O-ring for your application. I will also share with you guys how to measure an imperial O-ring, but if you guys do not want to measure the O-ring itself, you can also grab the corresponding part, which may have a groove in it where the O-ring will sit, and you can also measure the groove of this part to determine the size of O-ring which is needed. So we can do the same thing to the imperial sizes. We take our vernier, switch it over to the imperial size, now we can measure the groove of the housing itself. That's a much more accurate measurement than measuring the bigger O-rings themselves. Over here, I have the used O-ring. This is the one that came out of the groove. And this one right here happens to be a new one. You can also go based off of the old one, but as you will notice, the O-ring itself is squeezed between the faces and the cross section this way is a little bit wider, so it's not round anymore. As you'll notice, the cross section this way is 0.102. And when we measure it this way, it is narrower. So 0.091 of an inch. And that means it was squeezed between two faces this way. And obviously, if it's a little bit smaller in diameter, it can be then pushed out in the width. So this is the old O-ring and it still fits in there, but it will not seal as good as a brand new O-ring. And now I will go ahead and measure the ID of this groove. So we come to 2.36 almost. And then the groove, as we saw before, it was around 0.1. So right there, 0.106. Now with those two measurements, I'm going to go ahead on the chart and share with you guys what I find. Over here on the imperial chart, we have the exact same setup. Um, it shows all the measurements, the ID and the cross section as a decimal or also as a fraction. So we know the cross section was 0 0.105, 106. So that is a 0 0.103 cross section or a 332 O-ring. And now when we go down with our decimal, we had around 2.4, which is 2 and 7 sixteenths. So our O-ring would be O-ring 143, and that would be 2 and 7 sixteenths of inside diameter and 332 of cross section. I walked you through how to measure metric O-rings and imperial O-rings. I also measured the groove where the O-ring will sit inside of. Um, I hope that helps you guys out as well. 
and with the links down in the description, you should be able to find the O-ring that is needed for your application. They also come in different materials. Most of them are regular nitrile O-rings, and you can find them in various applications like tractors, cars, or any other vehicles that are used on a daily basis. All right, now, if you guys wanna learn more about O-rings themselves, you guys can click the link down in the description. I find this website to be the best. I learned a whole bunch on this website over here. Uh, you can read about the squeeze of O-rings, the different material sizes, the temperatures of O-rings. So if you guys wanna learn a little bit more, head over to this website. Um, I'm not affiliated with them. I just think this website is very valuable, especially to me, and it might be valuable to you as well. This is the company I purchase O-rings from here locally, but I also have links down in the description where you guys can find O-rings closer to your place. And if you guys have any questions throughout this whole video, please leave a comment down below. And I'll get back to you guys as soon as I can. I'll also help you guys out if you guys are having a hard time finding the O-ring for your application. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button as well as I'll have more how-to videos in the near future. And I'll work on some cool projects where O-rings are involved or other things in that manner, especially around mechanical components. So if you guys are interested in that, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Until next time.